visit www.flaskup.com for all your Mr. Pandaria raiding guide needs. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Mr. Pandaria raiding guide. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the 10 man normal mode version of Iron Quan in the Throne of Thunder raid. Now, in order to complete this fight, you'll want to bring two tanks, two to three healers, and the remaining DPS. Now, it doesn't matter too much what DPS composition you bring. However, you might want to make sure that you do have enough ranged for some stacking. And we'll talk about that later on in the fight. Now, Iron Quan is a two-phase fight. And in the first phase, you will be fighting him while he is atop his Quillen. With which he has three. And all three of them have different abilities. And then in phase two, you will face Iron Quan himself. Which does require a lot of hard heal. But again, we'll talk about that later on in the guide. But first of all, before we take a look at any of the Quillen mounts that Iron Quan actually uses in this fight, we'll just take a look at his first two abilities that he will have in Phase 1. Now his first ability is called Throw Spear, and this is where he will throw his spear at a random player and inflict 100,000 physical damage on impact. That's all that ability does, however the spear is used again throughout the fight and we'll talk about that later on. His second ability is going to be your Tank Swap. And this is called Impale, which is a stacking debuff on your tank. And it will deal 40,000 physical damage every 2 seconds. So you probably want to be swapping on maybe 2 to 3, 3 to 4 stacks of that possibly. Whatever your tanks and healers can manage. So now we're going to move on to take a look at the first mount that Iron Quan will be using in the fight. And this is Roshak the Molten Flare. Now, he has several abilities. However, there's one key kind of component you need to be aware of during this phase. And that is his energy bar. Now, the energy bar is only on this, this quill and mount. So, you won't need to worry about it once you've killed it off. And at no point during the fight do you want the energy bar to reach 100 energy. It's fairly easy to stop. But if he does happen to reach 100 energy... Then he will cast Molten Overload, which is what will pretty much wipe your raid. It will cast Molten Inferno every second until he has no energy left. And it will also increase his damage dealt by 50%. Now, he will occasionally cast Molten Inferno throughout the fight. And this will only deal 80,000 fire damage to all players. And this will also relieve him of 10 Molten Energy. When he casts that randomly, it's not too bad to heal through. When he casts it every second... It's a wipe, so you need to be aware of that. Now, the reason I mentioned bringing enough range to actually stack up is for this next ability called Unleashed Flame. And this is how you're going to stop him from reaching 100 energy. And what Unleashed Flame will do is send a massive ball of fire at the largest cluster of enemies he can see. And this will inflict 700,000 fire damage which will be split evenly between the targets. Now, this will relieve him of 30 Molten Energy, and there must be at least 3 targets stood with each other in order to get Roshak's attention for him to actually attack those players. And once he has cast Unleashed Flame on them, it will leave a debuff on them which will increase the fire damage they take by 20% for 30 seconds. Now, there's two ways of doing that. The first way is to get two, two groups of three ranged, Group 1 and Group 2, to stand at either side of the boss. Group 1 stacks up, and takes three spits of Unleashed Flame. It's going to deal quite a bit of damage. Your healers need to be ready for it. After they've taken three spits, they spread out. Group 2 stacks up. They take three spits. And by the time that's happened, the Group 1 debuff should have ran off. So Group 1 then stack up and Group 2 spread out. The alternate way of doing this is you get Group 1 to stack up, take 2, spread out. Group 2 to stack up, take 2, spread out. And then get your melee player to move on top of the tanks and take two of the debuffs and then move away again. This means the players won't be taking as much damage in the long run because they'll have less Scorch debuffs on them. And in turn they'll only be taking two of the Unleashed Flame Spits. When we killed the boss we used the first strategy. However when we farmed the boss the second time round we used the second strategy as it was just a lot easier and seems to make the fight go smoother. It's your decision what you use, but I'd, I'd probably recommend the second strategy of getting your tanks involved. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Roshak will also affect the spear that Iron Quan throws at one of the players. 
and this has an ability called Burning Cinders. And this is where Rorschach will spit molten lava at Iron Con's spear, and it will cause magma to burst out of the ground. Now this will inflict 25,000 fire damage initially, and then it will stack 15,000 fire damage every second to anyone that stands in this. Now these are very, very, very bright red lines of fire and magma that go across the floor that can easily be dodged he says while well, probably getting hit by several of them during this video so you do need to just be aware of those and the damage they are going to deal now once you've killed off Rorschach you will move on to the second mount who is by the name of Quetzal the Stormcaller now this phase is a little bit of a pain in the arse but it's also very easily manageable now, Quetzal's first ability is called Arcing Lightning, and this is where he will zap a random player with lightning, which will stun them and also absorb any healing effects. Now, this will also cause them to shock nearby allies for 30,000 nature damage, and this means that you obviously need to kind of stay spread out, but the player will remain stunned until another player pulls them out of the lightning storm that's on them. Now, if they die while under the effect of the Arcing Lightning debuff, then it will move to a random player, so you need to get them out of this this debuff. And this is easily done by just walking up to the player and right-clicking on them. That's all you need to do. The player with the debuff becomes interactive, so to speak, and you can just right-click on them to get rid of the interactivity and get rid of the debuff on them. Now, the second ability that this mount has is called Windstorm. And this is where Quetzal will pull all of the players, everyone in the raid, doesn't matter if you're a tank or whatever, into the center of a windstorm. Now players will take 50,000 nature damage every two seconds until they exit the storm. And damage, healing and absorbing effects while cast inside the windstorm are decreased by 80%. Now when the storm is also summoned, there will also be rushing winds spawned, which are pretty much tornadoes, if you don't like the technical term of rushing winds. And these will try and pull players into them. And this will inflict 137,000 nature damage every five and a half seconds to people that are standing within them. So you need to pretty much run out of the windstorm as fast as possible. We found it easier just to run north and get out. And you can also use speed increase buffs, such as the roars from druids. We used one on each one because we had a healer droid and a tank droid it was just easier but anything else you can use for speed increase is also great to get out and the final ability that Quetzal has is called storm cloud and this is using iron con spear again and what he'll do is cause a rolling storm cloud that will electrify everyone in the raid for 200,000 nature damage now this affects stacks and people who receive three stacks will become fully electrified and stunned for 20 seconds. So it's like the molten one where it'll have the little lines coming out from it, except they look like lightning now instead of molten lava. If you stand in that and get three stacks of it, then you're stunned for 20 seconds or until it is spelled of the stun. So it's a fairly easy phase that one is. And now we're going to move on to Damren the Frozen Sage, who is the third and final mount that the boss will use. Now, Damren has a number of abilities, one of which is pretty different, but we'll talk about that one in a moment. His first ability is called Frozen Resilience, and this is where Damren will protect himself with a sheen of ice which will reflect 10% of damage taken back to the attacker. So, pretty much just don't kill yourself. That's all there is to it. Just don't do too much DPS. I know it sounds stupid, but yeah, you don't want to be straining your healers especially as you're about to go into phase two of the fight his next ability is called freeze and this is where he will freeze a random player and between one and five seconds after that Damren will then shatter them and this will inflict 150,000 frost damage to everyone in the raid so again that's just something you've got to heal through unfortunately his third ability is where he will use iron con spear again and he will strike it with ice which will freeze the ground around it and if you touch the, the lines across the ground, like with the Molten and the Lightning mount, then you will take 100,000 frost damage instantly and be slowed very, very, very much. 
and it will also reduce casting speeds by 25%. And this will also be a stacking debuff on you, so do not get frozen in place, especially on top of the Line of Doom. Now the ability that I thought was quite unique is called Dead Zone, and this is where Damren will directionally shield himself. So pretty much he'll have a shield either behind him and in front of him or to the sides of him or something along those lines and you then have to move yourself in order to DPS him correctly. So it's a bit like if you think back to Will of the Emperor and it was the Couragers I think that have a front shield and can only be attacked from behind. Think of it in that way and you have to move to either the sides of him or whatever in order to DPS and damage him. So once you've killed off all of the Quillen mounts, you will then face Iron Quan himself. And as I've already said, this phase is pretty healer intensive. Now his first ability is conveniently what the healers need to look out for, and it's called Fist Smash. And when he lo no longer has his uh, spear with him, he will smash the ground violently, and this will inflict 250,000 physical damage to every player every 0.75 seconds for 7.5 seconds. So that's a lot of damage. And this also links in with his next ability, which is called Rising Anger. And as the fight goes on, Iron Con will become increasingly angry, which will increase the damage he does by 10% per stack. So pretty much what you need to do is make sure your healers have appropriate cooldowns and your raid in general has appropriate self cooldowns, self healing possibly, health stones that load of malarkey in order to keep themselves alive. It's recommended you don't use any form of cooldowns on the first three fist smashes though. It's not really worth it. Now his next two abilities are called Ignite Cyclone and Freeze Cyclone. And the Ignite Cyclone will set one of the Cyclones on fire, which would be one of the tornadoes from the Windstorm. And it will cause it to burn all players for 20,000 fire damage every two seconds. Again, <laughs> even more healer intense stuff that you've got to look out for. And his final ability, which is Freeze Cyclone, will freeze a random cyclone and if any players go into contact with that cyclone the player will take damage equal to 5% of their maximum health every 2 seconds. Now this shouldn't really happen because in this phase we just took the boss to a certain position and then got everybody to stack up on top of the boss or behind the boss even as it makes for AoE healing a much easier and the fight in general just a hell of a lot easier. So that's going to do it for this Mr. Pandaria raiding guide. It, the fight's fun if you can master it. It's, like I said, a lot of healing, but it is fun. So, as always, thank you for watching, and if you are interested in future Mr. Pandaria raiding guides, then please do feel free to subscribe to the channel.